I mean, even in 1995, the, the notion of a lost civilization was not a new idea. That notion has been around for a very long time. We can take that notion actually back thousands and thousands of years. The most famous example is Plato, the, the Greek philosopher Plato, um, who gave us the story of Atlantis. From Plato comes the story of Atlantis, a great advanced civilization which had navigating and seafaring skills, which could explore the world, which built gigantic buildings, which had advanced knowledge in every area, which was prosperous and powerful. But then Plato says that uh, corruption crept into this society, that it became cruel and avaricious. It became greedy. It began to impose its power around the world. And he has a very ringing phrase. He said that, Atlantis ceased to wear its prosperity with moderation. And the suggestion is that it's this, this hubris, this conceit of Atlantis, that it becomes so sure of itself that somehow the universe struck it down. And we have the, the, the cataclysm of flood and, and disaster and Atlantis is submerged beneath the waves. Now, of course, the view of historians and academics is that Plato's story is just made up. He just made it up to make some political or philosophical point. But uh, this cannot be so. That, that, that view can't be right. I, I was very suspicious of that view the first time I heard it from a mainstream historian. Why are they saying that Plato made this up? Plato repeatedly states that it is a true story. Uh, and as we look into it further, we find something else, that Plato puts a date on the destruction of Atlantis. He says Atlantis was submerged beneath the waves in a huge global cataclysm 9,000 years before the time of Solon. That gives us an absolute date for this. We know Solon, we know who he was. Solon was a famous Greek lawmaker. He was an ancestor of Plato, as a matter of fact, about 200 years before Plato. And around 600 BC, Solon, the great Greek lawmaker, made a visit to Egypt. And in Egypt, the priests at a temple of Sais in the, in the Delta told him the story of Atlantis. And they said that it was written on the walls of the temple. And he said, when did this happen? When was this great civilization destroyed? And they said, 9,000 years ago. And that was in 600 BC. So that's 9,600 BC in our calendar. That's 11,600 years ago. Plato is telling us a great civilization was destroyed in a global cataclysm of flood 11,600 years ago. He's laughed at by all academics and historians. But then geology comes along, and lo and behold, what do we find? 11,600 years ago is a truly cataclysmic episode in geological history. It's called Meltwater Pulse 1b. We have a massive rise in sea level as the ice sheets on North America and Northern Europe just crumble and collapse into the ocean. If Plato made the whole thing up, he was just astonishingly on the money hmm. with the latest geology. And I think that we really have to reconsider our attitudes to these stories that have come down to us from the past. Academics have been too quick to dismiss them, too quick to say, oh, we've figured the whole story out, there's no mystery there. Maybe there's a huge mystery there. Maybe we should listen to these clues and hints from the past that speak of a great civilization. So when I published Fingerprints of the Gods in, in 1995, uh, it was um, at the end of a long lineage, going back to Plato and before, and of course famously Ignatius Donnelly in the 1900s, uh, the early 1900s and late 1800s wrote Atlantis, the Antediluvian World, which was a huge investigation of Atlantis. So this subject has been tackled again and again and again, and again mainstream academia has said, no, it's impossible, there could be no lost civilization, we know everything about the past, and it's been dismissed. But the problem is that new evidence keeps coming out which can't be explained by the existing historical model. New evidence that just doesn't fit the picture. And my sense is that this evidence is now becoming overwhelming and that we're reaching a tipping point. Maybe not this year, maybe not next year. But within our lifetimes, we are going to see a completely new understanding of the past, or a radical revisioning of the past, and therefore of our place in the world as well.